Hey guys, happy Wednesday to you. So I just wanted to start off with a quick reminder that I am fundraising. If you like this content, but you would love to see it with higher audio and visual quality, I am building a home studio right now. We finally got uh, an apartment in the state that we moved to. And um, I'm. If, if you want to support that, you can go over to donswriting.com slash studio. A lot of you have already supported it very generously. I'm eternally thankful for that. And uh, a lot of cool bonuses if you do support. So again, donswriting.com slash studio. And if this sort of fundraising pitch uh, annoys you, don't worry, I'm only continuing it till July 30th. So you can feel free to ignore me until then. I will not be offended. All right, now on to the topic of today. I've been thinking a lot about an idea that I call own it or conquer it or conquer it or own it. And the inception for this is, you know, I get a lot of questions and requests for advice, but what it, one of the things I realized was that often it wasn't really a question so much as it was an excuse and what the, the, the person wanted from me, an excuse for why they couldn't do what they said that they wanted to do. And what they really wanted was either some magic bullet that automatically cured the problem or in effect permission to give up. And this is very foreign to me, but I really hadn't had a concept to name it. And usually, you know, when somebody has a problem, then you try to think of a solution. But there are certain cases I realized where that's the wrong way to think about it. So I want to delve into this distinction I have between conquer it or own it. So I was not naturally good at outlining and one of the consequences of that was I had enough raw skills that people could read my writing and it sounded pretty good but it wasn't having the persuasive impact that I wanted and I realized that look a lot of that comes down to it was not structured effectively and so when I came to work with Alex Epstein three years ago he's a master at structure because he's a master at outlining and insists on outlining from the people he works with and so I would have the experience of trying to get away with writing something and he would come back and say this reads like it wasn't written without an outline so that's a really good incentive to create one and then you know three quarters of the time it would be here send me the outline for this thing that you just sent me uh, that's another good incentive to have an outline and so with um, a lot of work and a lot of time I actually became quite good at outlining and quite good at structure so this is a skill set that I knew I needed and I was able to conquer by putting in the work but let me give you a different case so um, my main interest has always been in philosophy and I was somewhat attracted to the idea of go idea of going into philosophy in academia when I was younger but one of the things that I noticed or encountered was that the style of modern philosophy so set aside it's you know that I would disagree with most people about conclusions that's totally cool with me but the the actual methodology was not just wrong but it was so outside my scope of abilities that it was crippling so it's hard to describe uh, without an example, but it would, but often the style of argument would be something like this. So we're going to discuss, you know, Nietzsche's argument and its relationship with Rand's, or we're going to discuss um, this issue in justice. Here are eight common views or eight variants of the same idea that are all slightly different, and each one we're going to have four different kinds of analyses. And I mean, I just, I've, you've lost me there. I get overwhelmed and swamped by complexity very easily. And if I was going to succeed in academia, I needed to be able to juggle this sort of thing effectively. Now, what I could do is I could sit down and painstakingly go through it. But what I would be naturally inclined to do is search for what's the real crux of the issue so that I don't have to uh, suffer through this amount of complex complexity. And what I ultimately realized was that that is a valuable skill set that I could own. So I'm not going to be able to just flawlessly and effortlessly engage in kind of a back and forth over this multi-layered if-then uh, reasoning 
But what I can do is get to the crux of a complicated issue and then pre present that to others in a really simple, accessible way. And this became really the root of what I think my strong suit is, which is taking complex ideas, looking at the very fine grained scholarly analyses of things, but then boiling it down without dumbing it down for a more general reader. And so this is a case where instead of conquering a barrier to success, I owned it and turned it into a path to success. Now there's some things that I think are kind of a mixture of the two. If you had met me in the early 2000s, I could not order a Subway sandwich without stumbling over my words, hemming and hawing, not being able to complete a coherent thought, certainly about things that I hadn't fully thought out and fully worked out. And I could write, but that's because I could edit. And that's why I always considered myself more of an editor than a writer. But once I actually had to make a career out of being a public intellectual, one of the things that happened is just as my thinking became more clear, it addressed some of the verbal challenges that I had. But it was also something that I worked really hard on. And that would be things like practicing questions and answers. It would be things like practicing speaking. One of the things that I've done more recently is when I'm thinking, I'll often do it while I'm going for a walk and do it aloud and really put in stress on trying to make each sentence coherent, clear, and without clutter. But it's still not something that I'm great at, particularly if it's where I'm like being recorded and everything is live and the my ability to really kind of think through what I said and correct mistakes is gone. You'll still notice that like I don't have the smooth, perfect cadence of a nightly news broadcaster or radio god, right? And that's a situation where I said, okay, I'm owning that. Like this is how I talk and it should and it will feel, I think, if anything else, completely authentic. Like this is how Don talks. And some people that will attract them to and some people will be repelling, but just owning that as part of my identity instead of like suffering and trying to hide it. So what I think you should always be doing is once you have a goal, then you're going to have a series of challenges. And those challenges are things that you either need to conquer or own. What you can't do, what is off the table, what you have to give no quarter to is excuses. Excuses should be completely alien and unacceptable in your mind. There's only things you're going to own and things you're going to conquer. And so uh, I'd love to hear from you guys if you found that helpful. What are some things that you've been struggling with that you can either own or conquer and would love to hear how it goes. Talk soon.